Greetings, welcome back to Pink Oddbird. Today we are here to look at this next set in the dark release. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, just before we dive into these, I want to take a quick moment to thank everybody for all the love that you gave me on the last book that I made, which was the Art Deco Gothic book. If you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, I will link it for you in the description box below so that you can check it out after this video. As you can see, we have a lot to get through here today, so I'm going to be talking a little bit faster and also a little bit less than normal <laughs> so that we can make it through all of these in hopefully like a reasonable amount of time. This was the original book that I made, and this was the book that followed the Art Deco book, and this book was, um, it's a gothic. These are all gothic themed, just kind of general gothic, but instead of just like all, you know, kind of like dull colors. I've decided to add pops of color in, particularly red and purple, which I've been really loving that combination with the gothic style for this collection. So um, that was really the original inspiration. So we're going to go ahead and start with, actually, I think what we'll do is we'll start with the Traveler's Notebooks because there's three of those. And then we have these two. So I'm going to go ahead and move these out of the way so we can take a look at the Traveler's Notebooks first. So as you can see here, we have three Traveler's Notebooks. They're all fabric covered and the fabrics on these are so gorgeous. These here in particular do not have any digital kits in them. They're just scrapbook paper and real ephemera. So and then I think also a little bit of Tim Holtz stuff probably, but no digital kits. The other thing that's really neat about these is that they are gothic style and gothic theme. However, they do not have any of the macabre elements. Um, there's no skulls. There's no spiders. There's nothing macabre or anything like that in these. They're just kind of dark gothic themes. They're relatively all the same on the inside, but I'll flip through one in a little bit more detail and then I'll flip through the other two quickly just so that you can have a look. So in no particular order, I will just slide these aside. They're all just being held closed with some sorry silk. I chose to use these little Tim Holtz cabinet cards on the cover. I really was thinking about gluing them down, but the fabric on these is so pretty. Um, I think it just kind of like you know, it just makes it look nice. But also if you wanted to, you can glue it down in either direction. You can add a photo in here and glue it down this way, or you can just kind of leave it as a decorative element like I have here, or you can just do without it altogether. But I did want to include these because I thought they were so pretty. And again, these are red and then the fabric has tints of purple in it. So here's how the fabric looks. It's really pretty and reflective. I love the way this looks. And here's the back. This one we'll call Purple Reflective Gothic. That's the way it'll be listed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a flip through. So um, as you can see, I don't know, there. I'm just gonna try not to talk a whole bunch, but just kind of just let you look at this. Um, but yeah, so there's some collaging. You can add, you can further collage on these. You can add coffee stained paper and um, create a journaling spot for yourself or anything like that. These here, they all have one of these vintage photos here in the very beginning. They all came from a photo album of a lady who actually drew out the designs that she wanted to create and then she would actually make the stained glass piece and then she would you know record it by photographs so they all will have one of these really pretty vintage photos in the very beginning of the book these are vintage book pages here So there's just some little ephemera bits and then this is a real, uh, they all have one of these sheets in it of a letter from, mm, I believe the, this letter is from 1944. These are vintage recipes. I just thought they would be kind of fun to add in. Some burst malo yams. <laughs> and there's a pocket on the back of this one. a little vintage button. This is avocado stained paper. I thought these little coloring pages would be fun to add in. I think these are fun to do if you have like markers or crayons that you can use, color pencils even. 
little charm here. This is some antique or vintage ledger paper, I believe. And then um, a little playing card here. They each will have one of these uh, vintage button cards in them. And then of course this can flip open for more space. I did a little stamping in the book as well. This is one of those little Tim Holtz things and there's just lots of little goodies in there. Flinch card and another little charm and then I love this little trim down here these are antique calling cards these are vintage book plates this postcard is a vintage postcard but um, this is an alb albino moose University of Alaska Museum. Thought that was kind of neat. And then these all have pockets on the back. Oh, you know what? I take it back. This paper here is a digital, but um, I just used it because I think it adds a really nice effect, but I think it needed a little bit of balance and I really like these papers from Release the Crafton. Um, so I just, this is the only digital that's technically in here. So this is a, one of those vintage, um, you know, from the phone books back in the day, a guest check. And then they all will have another little photo of the gal who did all the stained glass, her work little trims there with a garment pen. These are just a couple tags. Some ephemera. This is a real vintage photo and each of them will have one of these in them. This is some vintage, uh, gas station ephemera and then a tag and then on the back of the book they all will have another one of the photographs of her work but look how pretty that is and then there's one final tag here in the back there's my stamp so that is this one um all right let's move on to the next one let's take a look at this one next this fabric is different than the first this one here is the same as the first one fabric wise so here's the little cabinet card for this book and this is how the fabric looks again it does have that like purple hue to it and I think it's really pretty super pretty all right, so here we go. I won't take everything out again, um, but you guys will get the idea. This postcard is really neat, I think. You can see down here. I don't know how to say that, but that's where it's at. Yeah. This is kind of like a little tuck spot up here.
I thought it was neat to add these pages in because they do have a lot of the stained glass. So I think stained glass is kind of like a recurring theme in these, in these traveler's notebooks, which is kind of neat, kind of like gothic stained glass. Couple more trims here, just hanging out. There are the stained glass photos for the back of this one. I think those are so pretty. And then um, this is a little tuck spot here. And then back here in this pocket, you have the big tag. All right, so that is this one. We'll call this one purple damask or damask, however you say it. Somebody corrected me once, so you know what I mean. <laughs> um, okay, so that's this one. And then I will quickly flip through the third one and then we'll move on to the big books. Okay, here we go. The third Traveler's Notebook. And again, this one has the purple reflective fabric on it. Oh, this is uh, the vintage postcard for this book. I thought this little sunset was so pretty. Oh, this is the vintage photo for this book. And on the back, I used the, the um, instead of cutting this out like I did on the other book, I just used it as a belly band. There's my stamp, and there's a little tuck spot here as well. And then we have the tag in the back. So that is this one. So those are all three of the Traveler's Notebooks. And I'm going to go ahead and move these aside. And we will move into the bigger books now. So I'll be right back. All right. So we will go ahead and take a look at this one first. So this one is really pretty uh, gothic with the rose on the cover. And then I like the spine a lot. Let me take the closure off here so I can show you. All right, you guys, I'm digging the spine on this one. As you can see, I used, again, that pur purplish with the red to go together and along with black, but I've just got some really cool stitches down in here, and um, this is how the spine looks, so it gives a really like ni nice texture. The back has just a little bit of lace on it. I got a little bit, a little bit of glue right there, but I guess that's what happens when you're human. <laughs> So here's the front cover. This book has eight signatures in it and it is a hollow binding. So the book will lay as flat as it can. It is pretty full. Um, so, I mean, you have a little bit of give to add some things to it, but um, I think that this book would really probably be best suited to use for writing. Um, because there are some spaces in here for you to do writing. So here's what the side looks like. There are some charms. There's a little spider right here. These books, the two big ones, they, they do have the more macabre and like more skeletons, skulls, spiders, uh, bats, all those kinds of things that the Traveler's Notebooks didn't have. So these two books do have those elements in them. And um, so here we have a little charm that says spirit, Another one here, the spider. There's a few little charms hidden, tucked in here between the sari silk. So let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. All right, so right in the front cover, I do have some of these matted on black, which as you know by now, you can use gel pen on those. This is from my Gothic 
ephemera kit. On some of them, I did leave the strings just to give it a little bit more of a tattered look. You can always cut them off if you don't like them. These coffin little tags that I made, I hand um, drew the, this design on all the coffin shape tags and then I just embossed over it so it's like kind of reflective. I used a lot of digital kits. I'll try and remember to link all of them that I can think of. Um, these two pages here have top loading pockets, so this one is empty and this one has a big tag in it. Some more ephemera. This is um, another piece that comes in my gothic ephemera kit. Just an envelope to add some things. And this is a tuck spot here as well. This also comes in my kit. This comes in my kit as well. Penny Dreadful. This can be used as a tuck spot or you can just flip it up and write right under it and you know it's just a decorative element it's up to you i did do several collage tags so both of these books will have some tags that look like this that i've collaged so in this pocket here there's another tag that I just drew a design on and embossed it. This is the sympathy card from my kit. Out. Here's another piece that I've just coffee stained. This is a casket receipt from my kit. So in these tags, you can see I've done, again, some collaging, some pretty wax seals there, and uh, just some more ephemera. From my kit as well. So as you can see there are some places to write in here. This is a little envelope. I made these out of book page. Dr. Jekyll. This is um, antique book plate, and then this is also like antique paper from one of those like little address books, and then just some coffee stained ephemera. Oh, this is a vintage tracing paper, and it came on a big roll, so I just tore some pieces off. But I thought this was kind of neat here because if you wanted to, you could, you know, use this little tracing paper and trace out all the different jaws here. I thought that would be kind of fun, or anything else that you want to place under it and trace onto there. A bunch of different gothic words in here, and another tag that I've collaged and gotten stuck to the paper clip. <laughs> There's another tag here. These keep wanting to get stuck right here. This is another receipt that comes in my kit. This one, what is this one for? Oh, undertake is to the undertaker furniture. So probably for a casket.
So this is one of the envelopes I learned to make from, mm, I want to say it was So Carol, but yeah, I'll, yeah, it is. So I will link to her video down below, but this is uh, just some more space for you to add some things to. This is a tracing paper that I printed on. It has a little nighttime poem on there. This comes in my kit as well. So this is one of those little uh, magnetic uh, book page pocket thingies that I showed you how to make in a recent tutorial. I'll link it below, but you have a pocket here, you have a pocket here, you have a pocket right here, and then back here you've got some either writing space or whatever, and then there's another pocket under here. This is too thick to go in there. Um, but yeah, and then this just magnetizes over the page. And if you wanted to, you could, uh, you know, add something underneath it and it will, it will hold it just fine, um, underneath there as well. It's a tuck spot. You have another top loading pocket here. And then in this one, there's another one of those tags. So here's the companion photo to the the other one there in my kit. This is another another piece. The I guess there are a, kind of a lot of elements in my little um, kit, and you know these are actually really interesting to read. It's a book page here in the center. One of Sabrina's envelopes, which I'll link her as well. I love these. They make really fun little writing elements to add in. I did um, use paper bags on these, I think, for the first time made them a few times, but I don't think I've used paper bags yet. So this flips up and then tuck spot here with a tag and then of course the back side of this you can maybe mount a photo or something it's another tuck spot this is a jumbo tag and this tag actually has a jumbo pocket so you can hide something cool in there if you want to and here we have um another envelope here and this just is a vintage piece of music sheet and it opens up so you can seal it down to make it an envelope or you, you know the drill <laughs> you can use it how you want to and then back here one little carriage and that is it for this one so this one is gothic rose we'll just call it that because that's how it is so um let's go ahead and take a look at the last one all right, here we are with the the first book, but the last book. <laughs> Here's what the cover looks like. We have this really old creepy tree, and then we've got this little bat up here at the top. Really gothic looking. And then we have a little skull on the spine. And then on the back, I've got some lace applique here, some black lace app applique. And that kind of trickles over onto the spine as well. These the spine or the cover as you'll see is kind of pieced together you can see that here and that's because little Rhonda Lee had given me some really cool leather and so I wanted to use that leather for this book and I had to kind of piece it together to get it to cover the book completely but I'm really happy with this leather look and feel on this book like it feels so cool <laughs> so I actually don't think I've had a leather book before so the closure is Saudi silk as usual. 
This one also is a hollow spine, so it will lay as flat as it can for you while you're using it. And again, this one is kind of full, so there is some space to add a little bit of things, but again, um, probably more usable for uh, writing into the spaces that are uh, present. So she really liked she really likes jewel tones so i definitely wanted to include like a little bit more jewel tones in here you'll see there's some greens you'll see blues just more colors than than there were in the others and um you know that was all done intentionally so uh, again i will link to as many of these places where i've got images as i can um, or use digis um, so this is a little Thing here we have a tuck spot here there's a, a little slot here in the center and then on the other side again you have another little tuck spot this is from so Carol also and ephemera. these are more pieces that I've already shown so I won't um, take them out or you know take the time to show them this is a vintage postcard There's one of those pockets, it's a tag. These pages are kind of fun and interesting. They're from like a little witchy book that I have and they have some interesting um, readings on them. This is a really cool vintage postcard also. So here's the big envelope for this book. So this is how the front looks. And on the back, your double pockets. Collage tags. There's one of those magnetic thingy dingies. I really enjoyed making all these books, as you guys know. Um, this is obviously my favorite style of all time. I do have more that I need to make coming up here pretty soon. Here's another one of those vintage postcards. I love these. But yeah, so I have more coming up pretty soon. But um, I think that, you know, I do have a few more custom orders that I'm working through. But I, I might try and see if I can squeeze uh, some things in here and there. In between that you know that I can um, put up for everyone to be able to have so if you guys have been paying attention to my Instagram or my YouTube community board you would see the progress that I have been posting on all of these books that I've been working on I've been posting it over the past couple weeks I want to say or week and a half or a couple weeks something like that just so that you guys would be able to know um, what's coming up so yeah so there will be more in the dark release like I said before it's just really kind of going to be an ongoing thing continue continuous I guess if you will but I do have some other projects that I will be working on uh, in between here and there. Been really busy, as you can see. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm really happy with the way that all of these turned out, though. Um, if I could keep them all, I would. I really actually start running out of space for my own collection. So, <laughs> I can't keep them all. Um, you know, as much as I want to, but I just can't. So.
so here's another one of those really pretty cathedral uh, book pages. There's a little notebook, it's a coffee stained envelope. What's back here? Oh, this is an, this book page is actually really neat. I think these are like modern day cathedrals or a, it's a cathedral. It's not a, it's not plural. <laughs> a little lacy. This book page is really cool. It's a little bit of fabric here. There's my stamp. A book page back there and a couple tags here. So that is this one. So that's this one and I really hope that she enjoys this book and I hope that you all have enjoyed spending a little bit of time here with me today. Um, I tried to make this as fast as I could <laughs> but you guys know how it is you know. Once we get going we get going. All right, so these are all of the books for today. I appreciate you guys all being here with me to hang out and take a look at this collection of the, or this set in the dark release, I should say. Um, like I said, there will be more to come in the future. I will always keep you guys posted here on Instagram as well as, or sorry, I will keep you posted on Instagram as well as here on YouTube for what's coming up so that way you can kind of be in the know a little bit. And we also have a what's in the box book video that'll be coming up soon and a, and we also have the prompt week video coming up sometime soon, a little bit closer to the end of the month. All right. Wait, does anybody else want to see it like this? Because I really want to see it like this. I mean, like, is this magic or is this magic? Is this magic? What kind of magic is this? You remind me of the babe. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so that is going to wrap it up for me for now. Be sure to stay tuned because you never know what direction this odd flock of ours is heading into. And until next time, toodaloo.